Welcome to worship as we gather together for Jubilate Sunday, the third Sunday after Easter. Our uh, name Jubilate comes from our intro it once again, and it's uh, drawn from the words shout for joy to God from the beginning of our intro it. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We're going to begin our service today which is following Divine Service Setting 1, again, by the way, with hymn number 727 on Eagle's Wings. Number 727. <laughs>
Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All men. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. All men. Brothers and sisters, we are still in the season of Easter. We are still celebrating the joy of the resurrection. And so, I invite you, if this is your penitent confession, to hear the beautiful Easter gift given to you by Jesus Christ. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our introit for today is drawn upon Psalm 66. Shout for joy to God, all the earth, alleluia. Sing the glory of his name, give to him glorious praise, alleluia. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds towards the children of men. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip? Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Alleluia. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Alleluia. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show those in error the light of your truth, so that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant faithfulness to all who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's church, that they may avoid whatever is contrary to their confession, and follow all such things as are pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 147, verses 1 to 11. Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. For it is pleasant and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the beasts their food and to the young ravens that cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the legs of a man. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those whose hope is his steadfast love. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle for Jubilate Sunday is from 1 Peter chapter 2. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to Abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Be subject 
for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to the governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, A little while, and you will see me no longer, and again a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us, A little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? So they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves, what I meant by saying, A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now. But I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. hymn of the day for today is number 469, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, number 469.
grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon title today is Your Sorrow Will Be Turned Into Joy. And it is drawn from this gospel that we had today. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Monday Thursday was pretty melancholy for Jesus' disciples. The Lord had announced his last will and gave his New Testament when he instituted his supper. He told them what would happen to him in a matter of mere hours. The Lord knew that his time of departure, his time of death, was drawing near, for it was Holy Week. The disciples were soon to lose their teacher, master, and Lord. They had been with him for three years now, learning from him as he taught them. They grew very close, as they had been with each other day in and day out. Yet the time was at hand when the disciples would not see their Lord, for they would not see him following the crucifixion until the third day, when he would rise again. And so on that third day, they would see him alive, resurrected, risen from the dead. Jesus said they would see him and they would rejoice, except for the fact that they were too dumbfounded to recognize their risen Lord. Eventually, they would get it. They would finally realize that Christ is risen. Their sorrow would finally turn to joy. But their joy would not be permanent. Jesus said that they would see him because he goes to the Father. He would be with them for 40 days following his resurrection. On the 40th day, he would go to his Father. He would ascend into heaven where he would sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. The Lord says in our text, A little while and you will not see me. And again in a little while and you will see me because I go to the Father. The soon-to-be apostles would indeed see him as they, one by one, would be martyred for their faith, except for John. And they would eternally rest from their labors, and they would see the Lord face to face in all his glory in heaven. And so it is with us today on this Jubilate Sunday of Easter that we begin to turn our faces from the empty tomb toward heaven as we begin to look forward to celebrating our Lord's ascension, as he leads us to the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. This hope, this certainty, gives us joy, which no one will ever, ever take from us. And no matter what we undergo in this fallen and broken world, no matter what we suffer in this life, and no matter what sinful, shameful things we do, and no matter what we see going on around us, we can still take comfort, for the Lord is still near us, that he is, in fact, with us always. St. John testifies, as he says in Revelation chapter 21, And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And we know he's with us. His name, Emmanuel, means God with us. He promised his disciples and promises us in the last chapter of Matthew, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. As the Lord instructed John, the Holy Spirit instructed Matthew, write, for these words are true and faithful. This means that our God has promised to be with us, no matter what happens, no matter where we are, no matter what is going on in our heads, no matter what's going on in our families, nothing will separate you from God. Jesus, our Emmanuel, is with us today in his word. Yet, we do not see him, but by faith we behold him, for we walk by faith and not by sight. The heavenly bridegroom is with his bride, the church, whom he has cleansed with his blood, making her presentable to God the Almighty Father, maker of heaven and earth. And behold, he who makes all things new has made us new. He has made us new at our baptism and our, in, in li our living our baptism as the old Adam in us drowns and dies each day in all sins and evil desires as the new man daily emerges 
and arises to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. He makes us new in the forgiveness of sins, which is an extension of our baptism. He made us new this morning at the beginning of our divine service. We see our risen Lord in his body and blood, tasting his forgiveness on our lips when we have communion. Behold, he who has made us new will make us new again at the resurrection of the body on the last day, when he will raise us and all the dead and give eternal life to us and all believers in Christ. The old body will be gone, and we shall look like Christ, for we will regain the image of God once lost back in the garden in the fall. Whatever sorrow we have for our not being in heaven, in God's kingdom of glory, will turn to joy as the Lord has claimed us as his own and will gather us to himself on the last day. And it says, And God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And as the Lord says in our text, Therefore you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, for no, for your, and your joy no one will take from you. So as we begin to focus on our Lord's ascension instead of the empty tomb, we keep in mind the central message of Easter, that Christ who once was slain has burst that three-day prison. The disciples were in sorrow, for the Lord's body lay in the tomb, and they saw him not. But their sorrow turned to joy when they saw the risen Lord who gave them his peace. The peace he gave them, he also gives to us. The peace which the world cannot give. Jesus Christ died so that we would not sorrow, but live in the forgiveness he won on the cross for us. And now is Christ arisen. He lives. He lives to silence all my fears. He lives to wipe away my tears. He lives to calm my troubled heart. He lives all blessings to impart. God grant this us in Jesus' name and for his sake. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. We continue now by confessing our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. As each petition ends with, let us pray to the Lord, you are invited to respond, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In praise of the awesome works of our God, chiefly the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and for those in error's darkness, that through the light of God's honor and great power, he would lead them to submit themselves to Christ's gracious redemption. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church, that God would preserve her from every sorrow and mockery of the enemy, that in this little while between Christ's resurrection and our own, the threats of persecution, loss, or discomfort would not turn us from the joy and confidence of his redemption, and that he would sustain all preachers faithful to their calling, all confessors steadfast in their trials, and all Christians firm in the faith for life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for the fifth of, gift of family, that you would bless those who have shown us a mother's love, all mothers with child, and all those who have suffered miscarriage or the death of a child, and all those who have yearned for a child and lived with the pain of this unfulfilled longing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for every human institution that according to God's will, each would exercise the authority he gives from above to punish those who do evil and praise those who do good. For good government under which we may honor everyone, love the brotherhood and fear God. And for us that our subjection would be offered always for Christ's sake as sojourners and exiles in this world. And that any suffering we must endure would be borne mindful of him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, suffering, and dying, especially we ask your blessings upon Albert and Beatrice Knies, Lundy Priestat, David Ritz, Lawrence and Ruth Schmidt, Judy Scheel, Elizabeth Winkler, Norma Rose, Renata Rose, Ron Rose, Lois Carter, and Susanna Kingsbury, that you would deliver and comfort us, guard us against despair, and grant us patience in the days of our trouble as we await your perfect healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God of your fatherly goodness, you allow your children to come under your chastening rod to conform us to your only begotten Son, here in suffering on earth and hereafter in glory. Comfort us by your Holy Spirit in all temptations and afflictions, that we would not despair, but trust continually in your Son's promise that our trials will endure but a little while and then be followed by eternal joy. Grant that we would overcome all evil in patient hope and at last obtain eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the offertory. <laughs> Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we have again worshipped in your presence and received both forgiveness for our many sins and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep us in faith until we inherit eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. We're going to close out this beautiful Jubilate service today with hymn number 920. Forth in the peace of Christ we go. Number 920. <laughs>
much for taking some time out of your day to uh, rejoice in the gifts that God gives us. Divine service that we take part in here is not about what we do, but what about what God does for us. And so I, uh, I am thankful. I have joy, jubilate, for the mercy that God has shown us through his Son. And I pray that that stays with you through this week as well. God be with you all. Amen.